My ladybug senses are tingling. Nope, I'm not talking about that guy, but the magical girl wonder, which is the miraculous ladybug. Whether you're a miracular getting hyped for the much teased about season two, or a newcomer who's wondering what all the buggy buzz is about, look no further. Get those spots on in your claws out, because we're counting down 107 facts about the miraculous ladybug. Come on soon. That's French for, let's get started. Fact number one. Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, also known as Miraculous Ladybug, is a French CGI action-adventure animated series produced by Zagtoon in Method Animation. The series features two Parisian teenagers, Marinette Dupont Chang and Adrienne Agrest, who transform into the superheroes Ladybug and Cat Noir, respectively, to protect the city from supervillains. Number two. Prior to the debut in France on October 19th, 2015, the series was first shown in South Korea on September 1st, 2015. In the United States, the series debuted on Nickelodeon on December 6th. Fact number three. Shows, especially cartoons, often release in one country and are released much later worldwide after a lengthy localization process. However, Miraculous is a collaborative effort. It was co-produced by Zagtoons in France, Toei Animation in Japan, Method Animation, animation and SAMG animation in South Korea. Fact number four. The series is based on an original concept created by French animator Thomas Astouk. He was inspired by one of his co-workers, Japanese animation, and decades of binge reading on comics. Number five. In an interview with No Life, Astouk said he was working as an animator on the show Witch when he met a woman who had a t-shirt with the ladybug on it. They began to share drawings, some of which were ladybug themed. Astouk also noted that Marinette's hair was styled after the woman. Fact number six. Astruc first drew Ladybug on sticky notes and remarked how strong the Ladybug character was. Despite this, he had no memory of seeing any Ladybug-themed superheroes in comics, just spiders and ants and beetles. Number seven. Astruc had intended to make Ladybug a comic book series until he met Jeremy Zag, who loved the project and wanted to produce it as a cartoon. Zag was 25 at the time and not originally from the cartoon industry, but managed to make Miraculous Ladybug the global sensation it is today. Number 8. Miraculous Ladybug was originally going to be a 2D anime series by Toei Animation. A promotional video was even created and released, which generated the online hype and swiftly created a strong fan base in both Korea and Japan. However, the developers decided to make the switch to appeal to Western audiences, considering the unfortunate downfall of the popular popularity of 2D animation. Number 9. In case you didn't know, some of Toei Animation's most notable anime series are Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, One Piece, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Dr. Slump, to name a few. Number 10. The anime concept was originally successful, however, there were concerns about the marketability of traditional 2D and the difficulty in animating Ladybug's costume of red with black spots, as it caused some strobing effects. Number 11. This problem was easily fixed by the creation of a 3D model, in which each of the dots on Ladybug's costume remain in place during rendering without the gruesome worry of wearing animators down. Number 12. In each episode, both Cat Noir and Ladybug have lengthy transformation sequences that can be seen in anime such as Sailor Moon and Madoka Magica, calling back to the show's original roots. Number 13. Small aspects that anime fans can appreciate are the Kwame creatures resembling the chibi art style, Marinette's shujo crush on Adrian, a beginning theme song, anime art that sometimes will appear in notebooks or in scenes, and ending cards. Although it is in CGI, several aspects of anime are still present in the show. Number 14. In the beginning, Astuk's drawings of ladybugs were a lot darker and more political as he was interested in developing a comic for teenagers. This didn't reach out to the larger audience, so Astuk allowed for the animation to become something much brighter and more positive. Number 15. Astruc described the positive vibes of the show as an Amélie Poulain meets Spider-Man feeling. He expressed that his goal was to make the show as enchanting as possible. Number 16. There was also a point in time where producers encouraged making Ladybug and Cat Noir part of a superhero team, but it didn't help sell the show. The superhero team idea was dropped because of it. Number 17. Astruc elaborated on the failed 
idea, saying Ladybug is the Quantic Universe, what Spider-Man is to the Marvel-verse, or Batman to the DC-verse. Quantic Universe is filled of superheroes in all countries, alien races, magic. Ladybug is just a tiny part of it. Hopefully, if the series is successful, we'll be able to explore it. Number 18. Astu created the show by drawing ideas and concepts from Franco-Belgian comics, American comics, and Japanese animation. He and his team wanted to create a show that reflected the romance and beauty of France, and they aimed for it to have superheroes that appealed to young girls while not falling into the cliches of female characters. Number 19. In 2010, the show was announced at Cannes Mipcom with French production group Univer Group Pictures and Onyx Films heading the project and working with Method Animation and Zagtoon. And Ton Sumash of Onyx and Method said that they wanted to create a glamorous superhero character with a real European flair with Paris as the backdrop. The producers had also planned to animate it in stereoscopic 3D. Number 20. Astruc stressed the representation of women was something that was really important for him and an idea he kept in mind when creating new characters. Many of the show's CEOs cherish Marinette's ability to reach out to young girls with a relatable heroine. Number 21. Astruc admits to having an interest in the show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which might have had some influence for Miraculous Ladybug. Number 22. The Mini Menace Ladybug are fake comic book covers and concept art drawn by Thomas Astruc before Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir went into production. Many of these issues resemble an early comic book look, more notably Jack Kirby. Number 23. Each episode takes around three months to write, from scratch to final validation of broadcasters. However, it takes more than several months to finish an episode, production and all. Number 24. Assistant director Wilfred Payne said that each episode is composed of two parts, a sitcom aspect where the characters have to speak for themselves, and an action element where the camera is always moving. Number 25. It takes 350 to 400 shots to create a 20 minute episode and about 10 panels per shot. This actually equals out to about 4,000 panels per episode. It's no surprise considering each action shot feels reminiscent to riding a roller coaster. Number 26. Jared Wolfson confirmed that the episodes of Miraculous Ladybug are not linear, but more or less self-contained. Each episode stands alone and is designed for the viewer to not feel left out jumping into the series. However, the origin episodes are important to understanding the main story. Number 27. The music was done by Noam Canyon, who also worked on Power Rangers. Number 28. The theme song was a joint effort by Canyon and Jeremy Zag. The English lyrics were done by Alan Garcia and performed by Wendy Child and Cash Calloway. Number 29. Miraculous Ladybug is known for its beautiful backgrounds of Paris, monuments, and landmarks. The development team emphasizes that they want to show the romance, fashion, and mysteries of the city, and they do so by playing with the shapes and proportions of the buildings and historic locations. Number 30. Christina Valenzuela, who voices Marinette in the English version, also provides voice talents for anime and video game productions. Some of her voice roles include Mio Akayami in K-On, Megisa Saito in Squid Girl, and Rei Ino Sailor Mars in the Viz Media dub of Sailor Moon. Number 31. Christina says she auditioned for the role of Marinette more than once. She had gotten many callbacks, but stuck to those auditions because she loved Marinette's character design so much. The red suit was what got her hooked. Us too. Number 32. Adrian Cat Noir is voiced by Bryce Peppenbrook, whose voice you might recognize from the Attack on Titan English dub as Aaron Yeager. He also does voices for Masomi, Kita, and Dorara, Meodas in The Seven Deadly Sins, and Kirito in Sword Art Online. He is the son of Bob Peppenbrook, who voiced Rito Revolto in Power Rangers. So fitting. Number 33. You might recognize Keith Silverstein's voice, who dubs Hawk Moth in the English version, as he's previously provided voice talents for Gontetsu and Kimimaro Kaguya in the Naruto series, dubbing Detective Kun Kun in Rosen Maiden, Captain Gantu in Stitch, and Vector the Crocodile in the Sonic the Hedgehog video game series. Number 34. In the fake comic book covers of the Mini Menace Ladybug, Marinette's name is Marietta, as seen on the cover of issue number one. Number 35. During the earlier stages of development, Ladybug wasn't allowed to abuse her powers of good 
good luck, or else something bad would happen to her. As of now, it is unknown if Ladybug still has this issue since, as seen in The Bubbler, all that happens when she selfishly uses Lucky Charm is that she runs out of power and loses her transformation. I mean, is that so bad? Number 36. In a placeholder animation, Ladybug was seen wielding a sword. Whether or not this is to be used as a new weapon or a Lucky Charm object is unknown. Number 37. In concept art and test animation in the 2014 licensing video, the yo-yo appears to have more abilities, like being able to split in half to become a staff, generating a wing-like shield, and exploding like a bomb. If Ladybug will have any of these abilities in the show, or if these are done with the yo-yo or something else, has yet to be revealed. Number 38. Marinette's hair color is an homage to old comic books that would use blue highlights on black hair. This more than likely refers to a Stuke's obsession with superhero comics. Number 39. The name Cat Noir is literally French for black cat. This is due to the series French origins. However, some sources have called Cat Noir black cat instead, back number 40. In the English dub version, it is Cat Noir. Fans originally called him Felix, after a famous cat character. For some time, this name appeared on the original French version of Zactoon's official website, but later disappeared with newer, equally reliable sources calling him Adrian. Number 41. It was later revealed that the Ladybug PV version had in fact called him Felix, and Felix and Adrian are not the same character. Adrian was made around 2012 to replace Felix. Number 42. Astruc expressed the reason he replaced Felix with Adrian was because Adrian was more interesting story-wise, while Felix was more an anime cliche. That's why we discarded him. Number 43. In September 2015, Astruc indicated that he was open to revisiting the character of Felix, but abandoned it by February 2016, writing that the character was a poor idea. Number 44. In developing Cat Noir, Astruc said Ladybugs represented good luck, so it was natural to partner her with the black cat character with bad luck powers. Number 45. Cat Noir was a tribute to comic characters like Catwoman, so it was like having Catwoman and Spider-Man in the same show, but reversed. So many Spider-Man references. Number 46. Cat Noir came to existence around the time the fake covers were being made, as seen with his appearance on the cover of issue number 12. Number 47. According to Thomas Estruc, in a joking manner, Cat Noir's suit is made of boyfriend material. The suit is not made of leather, but it is the closest material. Boyfriend material? Indeed. Number 48. In earlier concept art, Alia didn't wear glasses, but instead wore sunglasses on top of her head. Guess they decided to give her much more of a blogger look. Number 49. Marinette's home and school are located in the fictional 21st arrondissement of Paris, which is somehow both directly across the river from Notre Dame and in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. Number 50. In the toy PV, the Louvre gets blown up and the Arc de Triomphe is cut in half by a pillar of light. I mean, what's a superhero story without some city getting completely demolished? Number 51. The Miraculous have been around for thousands of years, and in the origins, we get a glimpse of some of the wielders. One of them was actually presumed to be St. George. The scene was based off a real-life stained glass window of St. George's Hall in Liverpool, England. Number 52. Ladybug and Cat Noir are based off of a ladybug and cat, respectively. This applies to all the miraculous wielders to one degree or another. The other ones are a peacock, fox, turtle, bee, and butterfly. Number 53. Although not having any romantic feelings towards Cat Noir, in the first French webisode, Marinette reveals that she's aware he might have a crush on her, and she admits she might have given him a chance if Adrian hadn't been around. If only either of them knew. Number 54. An Akuma in Japanese culture and folklore refers to an evil spirit. The way the Akuma work in Miraculous Ladybug is very interesting. The main villain, Hakmat, sends out Kwame butterflies to people who have just experienced a hardship in their life, which transforms them into wicked henchmen. Number 55. Kwame is very close to Kami, the Japanese term for gods or spirits. According to Astuk, a Kwame is Quantic Universe Kami. Number 56. Astuk has written on Twitter that plague means plague and tiki means happiness, so just like their masters, the two Kwamis are exact opposites. Number 57. Early concept art implied that Marinette inherited her transformation trinket in the form of a necklace at the scene of her father's murder. What actually happens is that Master Fu somehow got into her room and placed a jewelry box on her desk. Creepy 
old person alert. Number 58. The Ladybug Miraculous and Cat Miraculous are set opposites of each other in the yin yang section in Master Fu's chest. The Cat Miraculous is placed in yang and the Ladybug Miraculous is placed in yin. Number 59. There are only seven known miraculouses so far as seen in the chest in the theme song, but Thomas Astruc explained that it's a bit more complicated than that, with more information being discovered about them throughout the three seasons of the series. Number 60. In the animatic of the theme song, the chess box has many miraculouses that are not used in the final version, including what appear to be an eagle miraculous, snake miraculous, bear miraculous, lion miraculous, chicken miraculous, and bull miraculous. These are loosely based on the Chinese zodiacs. Number 61. The 2D PV's background lyrics, Every Love Went Through Your Head, Giving Love Turn Bad, implied a dark and troubled past for Marinette. This leads a lot of fans to wonder if there's more to our hero's story than meets the eye, or it was just simply scrapped. Number 62. The design of Hawk Moth's mask is a reference to the supervillain Fatumas from the 1964 French film of the same name. Number 63. Both the butterfly and the moth symbolizes change and personal evolution. This is likely in connection with his ability to corrupt and transform others into his henchmen. Number 64. Wilfred Payne, when asked on Twitter if Hawk Moth is a metaphor for human ambivalence, responded, yes, you can say that, but his true nature and purpose will change your point of view. Sounds deep. Number 65. In the Castilian Spanish version, Hawk Moth's name is Lepidoptero, which comes from the scientific order called Lepidoptera. That contains all butterflies and moths. Number 66. Alia's family name is Césaire. Her family was originally from Martinique, a French overseas territory in the Caribbean. Some think this refers to Almi Césaire, a French author and politician. Number 67. When asked about Alia and Nino's ethnicity, Estuc wrote on Twitter that one of them was from Reunion and later wrote that Alia was from Martinique. The show is actually praised for its diverse number of characters. Number 68. A Stuke wrote on Twitter that Chloe, Sabrina, and another classmate named Alix were originally intended to become a trio as a reference to the title characters in another French animated series, Totally Spies. Number 69. In Mr. Pigeon, Cat Noir decides to dance while waiting for Mr. Pigeon to show up. You might actually recognize some of his dance moves, one being the moonwalk and another being Gognum style. Number 70. In the French version of the same episode, a hilarious quote from Le Cité de la Peur which translates to good news for Batavia lettuce lovers is used as a transition in TV news. Number 71. In the episode Ladybug and Cat Noir Origins, Alia theorizes that Ladybug got her powers by being bitten by a radioactive ladybug. Sound familiar? Well, she continues by spitting out every adjective that was included in the Spider-Man comic title for good measure. For that matter, Ladybug's form-fitting red costume and her use of her yo-yo to swing around in the city are strongly reminiscent of Spidey. Number 72. When Alia becomes enraged with Chloe, she makes a sardonic comic alluding to hulking out, yet another salute to Marvel. Number 73. Kung Fu, the villain of the episode Kung Fu, is a walking reference to some iconic characters. For one, he looks like a pudgier version of Goku from the Dragon Ball series. His outfit is similar to the orange G of the Turtle School Goku wears, for his hair is similar to that of Goku's Super Saiyan form. Number 73. Kung Fu himself uses several weapons, with one being the most recognizable, his giant pepperoni pizza sword. Its size and shape resembles Cloud's Buster Sword in Final Fantasy VII, but with a savory twist. Number 75. The caramel wall Kung Fu uses to seal off the hotel mirrors the slime wall seen covering the museum in Ghostbusters 2. Number 76. The battle against the gamer is chock full of shoutouts to Street Fighter, with our heroes and gamer trading signature attacks of Street Fighter's famous characters. We see M. Bison's Psycho Crusher, Ryu's Hadouken, Ken's Shaoyuken, Dal Sim's Yoga Fire, and more. Number 77. Astruc makes a cameo in the French version of Gamer as the voice of the start menu of Ultimate Mecha Strike 3. This is his only cameo in Season 1. Number 78. Roger Cop. Half cop, half machine. Well, sorta. Roger Cop seems to be a family friendly mix of the not so family friendly Robocop in Judge. Dread. Number 79. In Roger Cop, Cat Noir tries to pull off a Spider-Man by kissing Ladybug upside down. The outcome isn't quite the same, but this just adds another entry into the list of Spider-Man Marvel references. Number 
80 in Bubbler, when Marinette is standing outside of Adrian's house, her surprise at the camera ball and the blunt way she's being spoken to strongly resembles C-3PO at the gate of Jabba's palace. Number 81. In Antibug, Chloe, a powerless human, is trying to help Ladybug the superhero, but Ladybug thinks she is just carelessly putting herself in danger and doesn't listen to her biggest fan. Crushed by this, Chloe becomes Ladybug's evil counterpart with the goal of proving that she is better. Sound familiar? Number 82. Marinette and Adrian go to the Collège François Dupont. François Dupont is the secret identity of French teenager superheroine Fontumant. From a 1960s series of books later adapted into a live action TV series and cartoons. Number 83. Marinette is right handed, but this changes depending on animation errors. In Copycat, one side of the yo yo has inverted colors, black with red spots, like when Ladybug is using it as a communicator. Thomas Astruc says that it was another mistake that couldn't be fixed. Number 84. Nathaniel can occasionally be seen face planning into his desk in some shots of the classroom. Number 85. Astruc made a character based on Jose Belasco, a French actress, writer, and director. They made a character who looked and acted like her and then got the real actress to dub the character in France. In the English dub, the character's name is Sarah. Number 86. Miss Mendeleev is the physics, science, and math teacher at Collège François Dupont, whose first appearance was made in the episode The Evil Illustrator, a Russian chemist who was the founder and compiler of the modern periodic table of elements. Number 87. Thomas has stated that he loves all the characters equally but has a preference for Jagged Stone and a dislike for Chloe. Number 88. Jagged Stone, the musician Marinette and Adrian are obsessed with, is actually quite hilarious. His name is a pun of the genre, hard rock, while also calling back to Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones. His assistant's name is Penny Rolling, furthering the reference. Number 89. Nathaniel's shirt symbol is based on the French rock band Magma. In the course of their first album, the band tells the story of a group of people fleeing a doomed earth to settle on the planet Kabaya. Later, conflict arises when the Kabayans, descendants of their original colonists, encounter other Earth refugees. Sounds epic though. Number 90. Nathaniel's name is an homage to Nathaniel Braun, the chief art director of the show. Number 91. Marinette's father is also called Tom Dupont. Dupont means bread in French, cause, you know, he's a baker. Number 92. In the American dub, Nino is voiced by Ben Diskin, who's voiced number one and number two in the anime series co-named Kids Next Door. Considering some of the other roles he's played, Nino's ran against adults in The Bubbler is pretty funny. Fact number 93. The poem Un Bustier was reading at the opening of Lady Wi-Fi is Lo Coccinelle by Victor Hugo. Fact number 94. Sparrow was originally a member of the superhero team, but producers replaced him with Kid Mime later on because Mime was such a great character that they didn't want to keep him as adult fatty only. Fact number 95. Some of the unused characters have similarities to other canon characters. Melody plays the flute like Volpina, and Mercury has similarities in his civilian design to Nino. Fact number 96. Despite being a primarily French animated series, the show was lip synced to English audio. The Miraculous team chose to do this in order to make the series more marketable in the US. Fact number 97. Bandai, one of the world's largest toy manufacturers, the makers of Power Rangers, action figures is introducing an assortment of toys centered on aspirational action play, transformation, and of course friendship. Arriving on shelves this fall, the Miraculous line includes the first ever action figures designed specifically for girls with other products to support like transformational role play and plush pets. Fact number 98. The Bee Kwame was first revealed by Jeremy Zag with the picture posted on his Instagram. The image was captioned, new Kwame means new super Superhero? Hmm, maybe. A week later, he revealed the Peacock Kwame. Season 2? Get here already. Fact number 99. Only after 10 weeks on air in the US, Miraculous entered the top 10 animated series for all time slots and networks. Fact number 100. Miraculous became a number one animated show for broadcaster TF1 in France and the number one children's show in South Korea. Number 101. Kimberly Cooper, a blog writer who has contributed to news media such as the Huffington Post wrote that the show has inspired teens and adults to create and propagate miraculous remixes and liked that the show featured multiracial characters as with the film Big Hero 6 which had won an Oscar. She quickly realized there was a far cooler and broader
Water Miraculous Movement underway. Number 102, The Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir specials, which are standalone episodes of the series, have been confirmed. Three episodes are currently in production, as revealed by Jeremy Zag. Fact number 103, For fans of the anime, an OVA for Miraculous, The Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir was recently confirmed. And don't fret, they're going to keep Adrian instead of Felix. No one likes you, Felix. Fact number 104, A Miraculous Movie, made with combined live action and animation, is in the works. Thomas confirmed that this will happen if the show is successful enough. Number 105, Want news on Season 2? Well, good luck with that. As Sluk has addressed his fans about spoilers, stating, If your question can be answered by no spoiler, then it's certainly the answer. His Twitter name is even No Spoiler Man. Number 106, The team has announced that after each last episode of Miraculous, the fan base makes Ladybug macarons, which is fitting because they are French sweet pastries. In fact, number 107, it's been confirmed that season 2 and season 3 of Miraculous Ladybug are in the works. Fans, rejoice! And those are 107 facts you should know about the Miraculous Ladybug. Hit that subscribe button and let us know if we missed anything in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, ya bugaboos, and remember, Frederator loves you.